recap on CNN Sports Late Night, a shiny new stadium in the gateway to the West. But will the Rams head east? I told the league, I guess you've already made up your mind, so I guess this is a kangaroo court. The Hoop Scoop sees the magic in the nets in a big league collision. An inspired Scotty entertain the Hawks, and Indiana try to keep pace with the Bucks. On ice, a little chin music was the tune of choice at MSG, and a heated exchange at the Simpson trial. A officer of the court, he has lied to this court. He's impeached by his own witness. I ask that you put a stop to it. It's true. Late Night is next. Welcome to the show, everybody. Obviously, they all found out it's your first day back from vacation. Oh, and you, you two, were you that happy? I was absolutely ecstatic. I am Tom Kirkland. And I am Nancy Newman. We're glad to have you mm -hmm. with us. And the big question tonight, besides where I was on vacation, is are the Rams going to go to the party St. Louis is drumming up? Mm -hmm. We'll see. It's... Uh, Franchise hopping, who knows where they'll end up. The L.A. Rams were supposed to be no more. Supposed to become the St. Louis Rams. But not so fast, says the NFL powers. Just when you thought moving franchises was getting easy, here comes the old stiff arm. CNN's Brent Weber has the startling story, sort of a spiriting away from St. Louis. Georgia Frontieri thought the deal was done, but as it turns out, it wasn't even close. By an overwhelming margin, her fellow NFL owners voted to block the Rams' move from Los Angeles to St. Louis. I told the league, I guess you've already made up your mind, so I guess this is a kangaroo court. This uh, was one of the most complex uh, issues that the membership has had to uh, address in recent years. It uh, was a very difficult question of balancing uh, the interests of uh, two groups of fans that uh, we value very, very much. Commissioner Paul Tagliabu cited three financial areas where the Rams in the league could not find common ground. The league's demands for 25 of the $74 million in private seat licensing money that helped lure the team, money which was paid by St. Louis fans in advance for the right to purchase Rams tickets. Fox Network's concerns over trading the nation's second largest TV market for the 18th, and thus a significant change in the value of their NFC package. And the NFL's insistence the Rams help create a not-for-profit stadium trust with the intent of luring a future NFC team to Southern California. I think some of the, the demands were capricious and uh, convoluted, and uh, I can't really explain what they were actually trying to achieve. So St. Louis, a city which thought they'd finally filled the void left when the cards bolted for Arizona in 1988, is left standing at the altar again. We were always told by the league the one thing they doubted about St. Louis was whether or not we were a good football town. Well, I think that's been proven beyond the shadow of a doubt. So I really don't buy this argument that St. Louis didn't do the right thing. Southern Californians, meanwhile, seemed apathetic about giving back a franchise that abandoned them in the first place. It would be interesting, I think, and nice if they could stay. But if they happened to go, I wouldn't be disappointed. I think the Rams should leave because they're not playing good anyways. They might as well. We have the Raiders here. Once uh, bridges have been burned uh, and uh, people uh, get turned off on a sports franchise and feel like their um, years of loyalty has been uh, maybe not uh, respected, it's difficult to, uh, to get it back. The Rams insist the fight is not yet over. When asked about his chances against the NFL in a lawsuit, Rams general manager John Shaw replied, excellent. From Phoenix, Arizona, Brent Weber, CNN Sports. And coming up a little later in the show, one of the league's marquee names says he's found a new home. Meanwhile, the big story in the NBA continues to be the rumored return of a retiree. Michael Jordan has been dominating in practice, according to teammates, but lips are sealed as to when his airness will once again don Bulls colors and game conditions. Perhaps his presence in practice has already restored some hope in this rather disappointing season as the Hawks were relegated to victims on this night at the United Center. Let's take a look. And that is the lucky mock turtleneck 2-0 for Lenny going in. But no charm tonight. Scotty has had it blowing by Ken Norman, the hoop plus the foul 24-22 Bulls. Second quarter, Pippen driving the lane. Looks like he's going to take it in, but gives it to Tony Kukoc for the slam. Bulls by 10. The Hawks struggled to keep themselves alive all night as Ken Norman hits the three. Bulls by nine. 
The Hawks did have their chances, but the Bulls' Ron Harper gets the loose ball here, dribbles down court. Two plus the foul, game over. 99-86 when the day was done. Pete Myers, the man most likely to be replaced with the return of Jordan, scored a season-high 14 points. The Hawks fall back under 500. The Lakers and the Warriors hooked up in a Pacific Division battle. Tim Hardaway's last game will undergo surgery on his wrist Friday. Hardaway showing no ill effects, though. Beats the buzzer with the pass to Chris Mullen. We're tied at the end of one. Second quarter, watch the pretty ball movement by Golden State. Danielle Marshall, the recipient for the dunk. Warriors by seven. Fourth, the nice give and go. Sedale Freed and Sam Bowie to perfection. Bob Lanier, though, doesn't like it one bit. Warriors 109-101. Then Tim Hardaway ices it down the stretch as he knifes down the middle for the layup. The celebration is on. Golden State wins 119-108. The Warriors beat the Lakers for the fifth straight time at home and eighth time in nine games. The rest of the NBA comes your way a little bit later in the show. But, Tom, back to Michael. And in the midst of this real disappointing season, talk of MJ's return has to be like an unanswered, like an answered prayer. Yeah, absolutely. Unless, of course, your guys at the end of the bench for the Bulls wondering, you know, what about playing time? Well, Pete Myers may be out of the starting lineup. But what about the 12th guy on the team? He may be out of a job. So, you know, Michael's return is good for almost everybody in the world except for one guy on the Bulls who will have to pay. And Pete Myers, one guy hoping he won't return. That, of course, still not definite. Right, absolutely. Right. Nancy and I are calling a quick timeout. Coming up, the Clark and Bailey Circus under the big top in L.A. As officer of the court, he has lied to this court. He's right. impeached yeah, by his own witness. I ask that you put a stop to it. Either Mr. put Bailey. Cordoba on the Excuse stand me, Mr. or Bailey. stop her from testing. Stand up and speak when it's your turn. If you like that matchup, how about the NCAA tournament and its first round prayers? These long shots get their day in our court. Andre Risen's caught lots of attention and no doubt his share of multi-million dollar offers. So where's the flashy wideout going to settle? One team stocks Risen. And Grant Hill does his best to liven up the Piston Pistons Clippers matchup. All these and more, all these moves and more straight ahead. I'm not going in. <laughs> oh, I'm on my deathbed here. Why not take Dayquil? But my head is pounding. <laughs> and I can't stop calling. Take Dayquil. And won't this stuff fix all that? No, that won't do anything for your headache or your cough. Take the Dayquil. From the makers of NyQuil, Vicks Dayquil Liquid Caps. Complete non-drowsy cold relief. Don't you hate it when she's right? Vicks Dayquil Liquid Caps. The non-drowsy stuffy head congested chest, sore throat, coughing fever, so you can face your day medicine. Also try new Dayquil sinus formulas. the best western call 1-800-528-1234 or your travel agent money power fear chinese food and that's just the first commercial gramercy press the new season will peter save gramercy press will ellen lower her literary standards Will Martin check his email? Gramercy Press, the new season. Worried you might have termites? Call 1-800-TERMINEX to know for sure. Where's that number? Nobody offers a better guarantee. Even if you've misplaced our number, just remember, 1-800-TERMINEX. Call now. Welcome back. Come high noon Eastern time on Thursday. It's tip-off time for the NCAA basketball tournament. The first round is famous for colossal mismatches. One and done time for the likes of Florida International, the 64th seed. They get to tackle number one UCLA. Our Bob Lorenz has more on the one in a millions in the tournament. There he was, scoring bucketfuls of points in the ACC tournament. A record 107 in three games, to be exact. The guy's got a heart the size of two grown men, and it's just pumping all the time. Now, one must wonder if Wake Forest's Randolph Childress was just warming up prior to the Demon Deacons NCAA opener against North Carolina a &T. He was simply, uh, what's the word? Unbelievable. Uh, watching film on him, I knew he was a good player, but watching film on him is pretty scary. Uh, 
he just made a lot of money this past weekend. He uh, can shoot the basketball. He can go right, go left. Usually players have a weakness, but I haven't seen a weakness in Randolph's game. As the 16th and final seed in the East Regional, North Carolina A&T will just try to keep its head above water. Meanwhile, Odom is concerned with other body parts. Made sure that both their feet, all their feet, are on the floor, uh, firmly, firmly on the floor. We can't um, look past a t because, th like I said, th they might sneak up and maybe steal one from us. But if we come in mentally prepared and do the things that we've been doing to get us where we are now, I think that we should beat them. Yeah, that number one seed puts a team in the big-time pressure cooker. Lose to a number 16 seed, it would be humiliating. Maybe that's why Kansas won't think about wearing a Colgate smile until after its Midwest region opener. At this stage of the year, I think... Uh, uh, it's a do-or-die situation, and everyone pretty much understands that. Pretty much? You lose to Colgate, you're out, pal. And the Patriot League champs are all dressed up for their first ever big dance. They've got superstar center Adonald Foyle, for one thing. And that 24-5 and record didn't come without some hard work. Despite some of the bumps and bruises that we took along the way, I think it was worth it in the long run. Uh, particularly since I was in the first year of a five-year contract, I didn't really care about my one-loss record, so it worked out well. I don't know if the players enjoyed it as much as I did. Meanwhile, Mount St. Mary's coach Jim Phelan is enjoying his first trip to the NCAAs, and after 41 years of leading the Mountaineers' charge, don't think he hasn't learned a few tricks that might help slow down top-seeded Kentucky in their southeast opener. I'd like to roll on the floor or something and uh, create some kind of a sensation, you know, to maybe stop it. It used to be when my kids were younger, I used to get one of my older children to send one of my younger ones out there on the floor. And, <laughs> and, and then the referee would stop the game and say, get that kid out of there. I, we used that a couple times. <laughs> And talk about an ominous sign for the Wildcats. Superman showed up on St. Mary's behalf. You know, we have to uh, box out, keep a couple of their big guys off the boards, and hit our open shots. And if uh, we do that, we can beat, you know, anyone. It doesn't matter who we're playing. Kentucky can only hope that Mount St. Mary's doesn't turn out to be like Mark Pope's barber. My haircut, boy. I went to the barber shop this morning. And, uh, the, this, I don't know. The, you know, and they do a great job all the time. But I think... I think this girl that was cutting my hair was a little ambitious. <laughs> Bob Lorenz, CNN Sports. The Arkansas Razorbacks are looking to become just the second team in the last 20 years to win back-to-back -back national championships. Duke did it back in 91 and 92. Nancy. Now the NFL news, and Andre Risen has decided on who will be the benefactor of his services next season. The free agent wide receiver says Cleveland is his destination of choice. After five seasons with the Falcons and one with the Colts, Risen is apparently taking his big numbers north for the 95 campaign. Agreeing to a reported multi-year deal with the Browns tonight, Risen has made much controversial news off the field as well. But the Browns are much more interested in his obvious football talents. He likes the Browns. We like him. The chemistry is right. He likes the situation, the opportunities that we have for him in Cleveland. And I accept it as a tribute, a flattering tribute to the Cleveland Browns organization. And one more note at wideout, Michael Timpson is the newest member of the Chicago Bears. Timpson caught 74 passes for the Patriots last season, but the Pats declined to match a three-year, $4.5 million offer sheet he signed a week ago. Miami's All-American lineman Warren Sapp is acknowledging he tested positive for marijuana at the recent NFL drafting combine, but vehemently denies a New York Times report that he'd also tested positive for cocaine. The NFL is backing Sapp up, agreeing he is cocaine-free. And most NFL GMs feel it won't hurt Sapp's chances of being one of the top five players drafted in the spring NFL draft. I was amazed that they did not check it out with the league. How can you possibly report something that allegedly happened through the NFL and not confirm it with them. And then it be of the magnitude and controversy involving a star. It was absolutely shocking. And former Miami Dolphins wide receiver Mark Duper's a free man tonight, cleared along with his brother-in-law by a 12-member federal jury on charges of conspiracy and cocaine possession with intent to distribute. Both had faced 10 years in prison and millions of dollars in fines. Still, Duper says he must continue his recovery from cocaine addiction or this verdict doesn't matter very much.
don't go away. Still ahead on Late Night, a role reversal in the Simpson trial as a member of the defense team finds himself on the defensive. We've got the rest of the NBA action and plenty of heavyweights in action. Shaq and company evade the Meadowlands while the super rookie leads the way west. Plus, we've got the night on ice. And yes, it's been a while since the Flyers have set the pace in the NHL, but the Lindros-led contingent is making a statement. All the pictures when CNN Sports Late Night continues. These television commercials convinced my mom, my sister, and me not to join MCI savings programs. Then we heard about MCI's new friends and family, and we decided to try it. So we joined together. Now, when we spend just ten dollars a month, we save fifty percent on all the calls we make to each other. That's half of what we used to pay on AT&T's basic rate for the same calls. And now we realize that all the time AT&T was telling us not to join MCI, they were charging us America's highest long-distance rate. Now you can enjoy the favorite flavor of the Swiss, one freshly brewed cup at a time, with Folgers Chocolate Mocha Gourmet Coffee Singles. Rich coffee with a devilish hint of chocolate. Indulge yourself. LAPD Detective Mark Furman took the stand for a fifth day of testimony in the double murder trial of O.J. Simpson, denying he'd ever uttered racial slurs at any time in the last 10 years and calling any who claim he did liars. But before Furman testified on Wednesday, defense attorney F. Lee Bailey had to answer for his own words. Tuesday in court, he offered that he had spoken, quote unquote, Marine to Marine with potential defen defense witness Max Cordoba, and that Cordoba would offer testimony that Furman made racist comments in the past. In an interview for NBC's Dateline aired Tuesday night, Cordoba contradicted Bailey's assertion that he, uh, that the two had had a conversation or that Furman had ever used any racial slurs toward him. I did not claim that he related the incident to me. I said I spoke to him and I have no doubt that he'll appear. And I don't have any doubt. All right, this is the kind of nonsense that gives Wait. lawyers a bad name, Your Honor. You know, it's very clear what he said to the court and what he was intending to convey. He was intending to convey to the court that he had personal knowledge of what this man said because this man said it to him personally, Marine to Marine. And now he's standing up and hair splitting with us. I never said he said this to me. I just said he spoke to me personally. That's nonsense. That shows you what kind, what we have over here in the way of ethics on this side of the table. They'll get up and they'll misrepresent to their heart's content until they get caught. And then they have excuses. And then they start splitting hairs. And then they have, well, this means this. And oh, no, that means that. I feel like we're in Alice in Wonderland. We've got Jabberwocky here. But now there's a new twist to this dispute. In another interview Wednesday night with NBC, Cordova said he had blanked out in the original interview and that he had indeed talked with Bailey. Furthermore, Cordoba said Furman did use a racial slur against him, calling him a nigger at a Marine recruiting station and adding that he felt threatened by the detective's actions. Bailey is expected to finish up his cross-examination of Furman on Thursday. Then the prosecution will begin its redirect of the LAPD detective. And CNN's live coverage begins as usual at noon in the East, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Now the hockey story and first place in the Atlantic Division on the line at MSG tonight. The defending champion Rangers playing host to the surging Flyers. Yes, not since the days of the Broad Street Bullies has Philly thrown around this kind of muscle. They were looking for just their second win in New York in over five years tonight. Opening minute on the power play, Lindros sets up Michael Renberg for the first goal of the game. Less than two minutes later, Lindros netting the third goal of the period for the Flyers. Three zip, he and his line mates are on fire, but the Rangers fought back. Second period, they pulled it within one as Glenn Featherstone gets his first goal of the season. Pleased indeed, 3-2. Now to the third, score tied at three. The big man again, Lindros, the pass to John LeClaire. Blast the shot, past Mike Richter, five hole. That's the game winner. Philly is 10 at three and two since acquiring LeClaire. On to the forum in Montreal. The Penguins looking for their fourth win in a row. Martin struck out a Luke Robitaille, who's got Patrick Watt way out of position. Still in the first, Patrice Brisois. Matthew Schneider streaking down the left side. The slap shot finds net. Two one halves. Second period now, Yaromir Jager. And look at these moves. Weaving his way, makes his way into the slot and picks the top right corner. 5-3 Montreal. Later in the second, Ryan Bellows over the blue line completely fools Wendell Young. Habs finally break out, stopping the Penn's three-game win streak. The Mighty Ducks in the Pacific Division leading Flames from Calgary. And here we are, Guy Bear was a rock. And look, oh, the little toe save. 
Locked that toe up. He keeps the puck away. 29 saves. Now watch the play here. Stefan LeBeau behind the net. The old knock it to myself off the back of the net. He comes around and sets up Paul Correa. Just like that. Tenth goal of the game, or the year, 2-0 Anaheim. Second period, Ducks in, two-on-one. Valerie Karpov sets off Steve Ruchin. His second of the night, the Ducks win it 5-0 over Calgary. The Leafs and Sharks from the tank in San Jose. Penalty shot. Here comes Matt Sundin alone against Arthur Zerbin. Sundin goes high and beats him. 1-0 lead for the Maple Leafs. Same score, second period. Leafs on the attack. Randy Wood right here to Mike Ridley. Back to Wood. He pokes it in. 2-0 Toronto. Final 2-1. This must be a, some kind of a big leap in the shark tank. San Jose has lost five in a row at home. Toronto's starting to get uh, on a pretty good roll themselves. Yes, having a little trouble finding a net, but 2-1, hey, it's a yeah, win. That's right. Stay right there. Yeah. As promised, the rest of this night in the NBA is on deck. We will also update baseball situation plus the pod. Don't move. Your local all-value office products dealer has lots of lower prices. And friendly advices. Here's what you need. Thank you. Dealers from coast to coast have a whole lot in store. store for you. Our big deals. Or Marts feature a 10% to 25% savings on selected Hewlett Packard toner and inkjet cartridges. Or get this fellow's workstation copy holder. A big deal at $8.95. All value office products. Low prices, friendly advices. Hop to the islands, Abaco or Bimini. Paradise is calling. Do the Bahamas with me. Ask your travel agent about the GoGo -Go Tours Get Carried Away Bahamas package. Call 1 800 377 1199. Welcome back. Mad Max was back to his old tricks last night. They don't know when my time bomb will go off, were the words of Vernon Maxwell following a spirited exchange with Rockets head coach Rudy T. At one point, Tom Jonovich had to yell four times at Maxwell in the second quarter before he finally entered the game. After the game, Maxwell declined to comment on the incident, but did say he didn't think he'd be back next year. Meanwhile, tonight's action in Orlando, looking to shake off their second home loss to the season. Derek Coleman out swinging. Nick Anderson misses the three. Coleman, Johnny on the spot. Long bomb. Chris Morris all alone. 50-45 nets. On to the fourth quarter, and Brian Shaw also downtown. The strike to Shaq. Nice grab. And the layup, magic up by 491.87. But back come the Nets. Kenny Anderson, the nice dish to D.C. for the dunk and the foul, 94-93. Nets by one. Late in the fourth, Coleman up big again. Shaq going for the alley-oop, but is denied. The Nets go on to win it. That's two straight losses for the Magic. Coleman's 36 points is a season high. The Nets beat the Magic for just the second time in 11 games. The rubber match in the season series between the Bucks and the Pacers and Glenn Robinson shaking up early. Ankle a little tender. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ball, Reggie Miller lit it up. Rick Smith's the bullet past O'Miller for the layup. Pacers by four. Third, Robinson back and making an impact here, hitting the three to put the Bucks up by one. But nobody does the three like Reggie. Eric Murdoch, the save, but it goes to Smiths, who hands to Reggie. Money, 117-108. The Pacers rally from seven down in the fourth quarter for the win, closing with a 31-15 run. Miller's 40 is a season high. Pacers now just a half game out of first in the Central. The Pistons in the clip joint still in the running for the East last playoff spot. Grant Hill goes up and over for two offensive foul. He did have a career-high tying 28 tonight, but that part of how things went. Now, look at this play. Grant with the air ball. Terry Mills down low. Strip, we go the other way. This could easily, easily have been the late-night play of the day. Look at all this mayhem. Gives you an idea how good the play of the day must be at the end of the show. Pistons and Clippers, you know, there's some bad stuff happening. Two of the league's worst road teams. The Clippers are the worst team in the league, and Terry Mills has had it. He's just going to go and grab an ankle. The Pistons' biggest blowout win of the season. Allen Houston, who lit teams up for 35 points twice in the last three games before this one, was held to just two. And now, did someone say play of the day later in the show? Wow. Time now for our proof or proof positive play of the day. You've come to expect excellence and excitement, and here it is. More of it.
Delaware State Championship, the Spartans of St. Mark's, William Penn Colonials. William Penn's Gary Lumpkin hits a pair of free throws with 2.7 point seconds left. 2.7 seconds left. St. Mark's needs something crazy to happen, and there it is. Alex Carlson puts in the three, and the Spartans of St. Mark's are going bonkers. He needed this glass. This ball was going right out of the gym if that glass isn't in the way, but just like that three-pointer, good work for Alex Carlson. Very, very representative play. Proof positive play of the day, brought to you by MCI, the company that brings you proof positive. Money, power, fear, Chinese food. And that's just the first commercial. Gramercy Press, the new season. Will Peter save Gramercy Press? Will Ellen lower her literary standards? Will Martin check his email? Gramercy Press, the new season. Arthritis. Imagine if you could relieve your minor arthritis pain so effectively, it almost feels like you've gone back in time to the days before you had arthritis. Try Capsaicin P, a remarkable cream with the topical analgesic ingredient doctors recommend most for arthritis pain. Capsaicin P builds effectiveness until it reaches peak pain relief power. And when the pain is gone, it's almost like you've gone back in time. Get order free Capsaicin P with the ingredient doctors recommend most. Less than three weeks from the scheduled start of baseball's regular season and no talks between players and owners to report. Union Chief Donald Fear spent much of the day going over the National Labor Relations Board ruling with the players, while owners spent most of their day reading the fine print on the ruling, which found them guilty of not bargaining in good faith on free agency and salary arbitration. So as the sides mull this issue over, many are saying their focus should be elsewhere. We're not trying to take anything away. We're not trying to get anything extra. We're trying to keep what we've got. We've made huge concessions already. You know, we've gone further than we wanted to already. Now it's time to stop and say, let's sit down at this table and get this thing done. Quit messing around. Quit waiting on somebody to rule here and there. Owners, players, get in a room and settle it and get it done. We as players have felt like we've held up our end. And Tom, the, uh, the players have said that they would go back to work under the old conditions, mm -hmm. but that is clearly not okay with the owners. Right. Is a lockout looming now? Who knows? The players, of course, said that in September. Mm -hmm. They said, we'll play the World Series under the old terms. Owners, uh, I think it's clear, want to do something with this union and make some statement for long term. So uh, here we go. DJ Thanks for joining us. We're, we're sitting on the same stores mm -hmm. we've been sitting on for seven or eight months mm -hmm. now. I'm Tom Kirkland. And I'm Nancy Dewan. See you next time.